No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground sisters and happy Friday. It is our Friday live. Um, oh, so much to talk about today. We are going to be kicking off again for real this time because those that were with me last week, we are kicking off our live and we decided to push it back. And I'm so glad we did because we had a great week of just the video I posted on how to study the Bible. Oh my goodness, it was so good with the PowerPoint, which tells you how to use every single one of our workbook studies. So we did that on Monday. I talked to you a little bit on Tuesday. Um, I also shared a video on, uh, I just posted it on how to study your Bible. So that's good. And then guess what? I have another video coming out today. Yes, today is another video on just everything you need to know for the people that are always like wondering, is this for me? And what does this include? And how much time does this take? And so I put a video together yesterday on the Bible studies that I use, the materials that I use, the pens that I use, what is the process? Um, and, and what does that look like? So for you that have been here a long, long time, it's just might be another fun video for you to watch prior to us diving into the deep stuff. Um, but yes, you're going to want to check that video out. I put it together. It's a little fun. Um, also I like to use that to reach other women that are looking for an online Bible study ministry, which is eight, what is what HB ministries is about. It's an online woman's ministry international. So we're in all kinds of countries. We're in pretty much every single state in the United States. And our motto is to believe, behold, and become all God's created us to be in whatever season of life. And let me tell you, in whatever season of life is huge for me. Because in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says, For everything under heaven, there is a season and a time. And if you get a chance and you're new and you've never read Ecclesiastes 3, my soul and my heart, and I'll tell you why, has really been there again this morning. And I am just in awe that God has put together this Bible study on fully relying on God because more than ever, 
More than ever, I need this. And so the verses, the themes, everything, again, if you're new here and you want to understand how we do this, you're going to want to watch my PowerPoint video on how I break down the Bible study from the month's themes to the week's themes to the daily themes. My goal is not to give you too much. We live in busy worlds. I understand but we cannot have the excuse that we cannot sup and feast with God because I'm going to share a verse that I'm hanging on to and I'm going to share why I'm hanging on to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and why I'm hanging on to uh, the word of God that's opened in front of me and has been opened, this verse, which we're going to look up, um, Matthew 6 verses 19, lay up your treasures in heaven. And studying God's word and getting our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotion to line up with heaven is the most important thing to do on this side of heaven because sisters, we're going to have seasons and the seasons are going to, um, they can, they can really affect us. These seasons, um, can really mess with us. And I'll tell you what, um, oh, thank you, Jeanette. I love that color on you. I'm wearing my Fort Myers beach sweatshirt. Let me show you. I'll get up really close. It's buddy by the sea. Um, I'm going to try to talk about this without crying, but um, we knew most of the owners, an, a lot of the owners in the storefronts in uh, Fort Myers. Um, I told myself I was not going to cry during this video, but I'm struggling. We have been um, Fort Myers Beach family members since my kids were all babies, Um and they're 20, in their 20s, 24 now. I also, um, my parents took me, oh, I knew this was going to be so hard. Uh, my parents took me as a child to Sanibel Island. So my um, second home, I have never vacationed anywhere else, nowhere else. I knew this was going to be so hard. I'm so sorry. Um, oh. I never went anywhere else. We just chose never to go anywhere else. That was our life. Our friends were there. Our we had family there. Um, we took my mom. Just it was just where we went all the time. I um, we spent Christmas there a lot of times. New Year's. So once fall hits here in Michigan, we just went to our vacation home. And um, I don't know if many of you have watched, but. Um, it's just gone. And I have friends that have lost their complete homes. I have friends um, that were trapped in their homes. Um, we have people that ran some of the best businesses down there, the best hometown businesses, and they live down the streets from their businesses. Their businesses are now gone. Their homes are now gone. Um we are missing still thousands of people. Um, many died. Many were being rescued out of their windows. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's devastating. I didn't sleep all night. Instead, last night, I decided to just ponder on the good videos. Um, I have a whole entire a uh, folder on my Google uh, app of everything Fort Myers and Sanibel. Since I was, like I said, eighth grade, I have pictures that I uh, retook and stored on there because back in eighth grade, girls, we were taking the good old um, camera pictures that we had to go get developed. So I pulled all those out yesterday and, oh my goodness, every restaurant from the bubble room to every restaurant from the turtle races to Captiva Island to Tween Waters to all the way over to Fort Myers Beach, to every street that I know on Estoro Boulevard, to every vacation home that I have helped with residents that lived there um, and rented out their homes just to make extra money, to every everything. I can't even, I, I just was going through the photos and um, it's, 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 I'm grieving, and this is what God's reminding me. I'm grieving to everything. There is a season under heaven. I'm grieving the loss of something that was broken down. And Ecclesiastes says there's times, there's a season for something to be broken down and a season to be rebuilt. Well, obviously when we rebuild, it's different. And I'm okay with that. My husband's like, honey, you know, that's going to be a, 
That's not going to be an overnight process. It's, it's going to be many, 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 many years. And I will be, however, involved in, in, in however I can help there and have a place there in the future. But right now it just doesn't look like a future. And God reminded me of two things. I'm sorry of my sniffles, but this is just going to go along with this month's study so well. Um, God reminded me, number one, that this is in front of me ever since I found out. I, I mean, honestly, we were leaving to go to Fort Myers here in just about a month or so. And we were staying, my husband and I, by ourselves. And then we were going back in March. We already have our place there in March. We did. And we were going there with all of our family for a month. And then I was going back in April and, uh, we were staying there again. I stay usually April to May. So part of me sitting here going, oh my gosh, that's where I go. That's, and my husband and I were actually going to purchase a home last year. So I am reminded through our Bible study, again, fully relying on God. He has authority over nature. He has authority over our our health. He has authority over the blind. He has, you know, the blind that can't see what they really need to see in life. He still has authority over your life. And all these things that I'm needing to rely on God, you still wonder why. You still get to that point of hurting. And and God reminded me, he was like, Heather, and I put I read it this morning. And a friend, a friend of mine who's also in Fort Myers, we were texting and she just lost her entire home. And she texted me and she said, we got to remember, she said, right now I'm holding on to, and she lives in Michigan also, but she said, we got to hold on to Matthew 6, 19. And it says, lay up your treasures in heaven. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Um, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And in every season, the enemy wants to steal, kill and destroy. So he wants to kill me mentally right now. Whenever you lose something, you struggle. And I know that you're thinking, wow, so you lost your beautiful place and all your memories and your Florida home. That's a treasure. That's a bonus. That's an extra. That's a blessing. I don't compare that ever to losing my health or my loved one or something to that capacity, but it's still loss and we all lose things. We all go through a season of losing And I really felt at this point that I understand, I understand, and God's reminding me, prioritize eternal things first, not temporal things. Prioritize eternal things first, not temporal things. We learn that every day, sisters, here in the ministry. And I guide you and I shepherd you. And that's why this book is going to teach you this month to fully rely on God. However, we're humans and we have emotions. We struggle. When we're going through these seasons, we need to believe, behold, and become all that we can be in that season. And so here, a sister and I are speaking to each other that we have to remember the eternal things and not the temporal. We have to know that our treasure and where our heart is, is what's important. And our heart is in truth and in promises thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My kingdom is, is, is in heaven. I am passing through and sisters more than ever. We are in the end times. That's a whole nother, whole nother message, but we are getting closer and closer more than ever. We should be developing our faith because when we get to heaven, we are going to realize what we honored and worshiped here on earth. It will make sense. It will make sense. So the days that you're struggling with loss, the days that you're struggling with loss in a marriage, with loss in a, in, 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 in a relationship, maybe loss in, in a job, loss in a home, whatever it is that you're losing, Remember that God is with you and you, when you rely on him, he is going to show you wondrous things. 
He's going to bring, bring treasures and promises in heaven to align up with your heart and what you're struggling with here. The enemy cannot steal or kill your emotions, even if you're walking through something. So as I set aside and I I have memories on my phone, I have pictures, I have the most exciting shops, um, I have tons of shirts, I have memories of my kids when they were tiny, tiny, tiny. We would go see the same lady for those little henna tattoos that they would love at the little stand in, in Times Square and millions of memories, the friendships we went down there with, the, oh my goodness. And to look and see that it's gone, God is reminding me, first of all, he always rebuilds and whatever he rebuilds or wherever he takes you is better. So whatever he's rebuilding in your, in your marriage is going to be better, but where's your faith lining up with that? Where Whatever he's rebuilding in your physical health will be better. Now, it may not line up that you're feeling better physically, but there's something he's doing in the spiritual realm and it will be better. So super, 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 super huge to understand. And I had to step back and I had to say, wait a minute, my spotlight cannot be on all of the external things and the temporal things. I get that. I'm grieving that. I'm really grieving that. I mean, that's where we go for Christmas and everything. I feel like out of sorts. I told my husband, I'm like, I'm in, I'm just kind of walking through a a shadow of unbelief right now. Like this cannot have happened. And yet I'm reading scripture on defining really eternal and temporal. I'm going back to Ecclesiastes again to remind myself that there are things that happen here on earth and they're devastating. It says in this world, you will have tribulation. We would have never imagined this a week ago. I was just talking to my um, lady for my vacation house, our, our, our timeshare. I was just in a conversation, not even a part of something I would have been thinking about. And so when you think of what God's doing, I it took me back to other things that were torn down by hurricanes. My mental health was torn down by a, a hurricane once when I made some ungodly decisions in college. I didn't realize that that devastation of some decisions I made, and if you listen to me long enough, I'm not going to go down that road right now, but if you've listened to me long enough, you know some of the things that I've walked through. Um, I'll share a lot of that in this book. I'll open up a little bit more about my personal life, um, but it took me down a hurricane emotionally, a hurricane, which was leading me toward anxiety and leading me into a hurricane of um, just depression and worry and 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 self esteem and 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 low confidence from a from two decisions that haunted me, and I never gave God, I never handed over my life for Him to rebuild it. And man, when I did, when I really started coming to faith, because after the, another hurricane came and just tore our marriage apart, tore it apart. Emotionally, we were unstable. Everything, everything was thrown all away. Um, I remember the spotlight being on, uh, um, me thinking through another faith person, another believer saying, where, where Heather, do you have your heart set? Is your heart set here on the marriage or is it set on God's love and what he can do for you right now and how he can rebuild this marriage? And so I I re- began to start prioritizing things during a few other hurricanes in my life. I thought, I have to prioritize what is important and where my heart is lining up because my heart is not lining up in the right place. And when my heart is not lining up in the right place, the destruction from the hurricane remains. There's no hope. There's no rebuilding. There's no restoring. And I lived that gap for a very long time. And so I am more excited now. God's given me more of a vision now, more of a touchy feely because of something I'm passing through right now to actually teach this book when we start Monday. Like I know that I'm going to be able to touch these scriptures and need them more than ever. I also have other things going on in my life. And let me tell you, 
The enemy is not going to use an ur- a hurricane to shift my heart and shift my perspective and shift the promises of God. Those will not be blown away. Now, there is a scripture that talks about where your heart is also. Let me read this. This is a really good one. Our foundation. Does anybody know that verse off the top of their hands? Our foundation, our home will be secure. This is how I find a verse off the top of my head when I don't know the verse, but I'm feeling it. Um, okay. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. I'm sorry. Matthew 7, 24 through 25. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it has been founded on the rock. Sisters, we are a house, we are a temple and we cannot fall. The winds are going to blow in your marriage. The winds are going to blow on your health. The winds are going to shake your relationships. The winds are going to shake your kids. The winds and the storms are going to come and blow things apart in your life. But let me tell you, you, you personally have control on who your rock is and who the words are that you're going to stand on. What are the present, the promises that you're going to stand in and how are you going to rely on God? When you rely on God, you are not going to shake. You are not going to fall and you are not going to be destroyed. And God kept reminding me of that. Don't let these winds and these floods and these pictures and these images and, and the videos that you're watching knock you down and beat you up. And sometimes the words people say to us beat us up. Sometimes the conversations you have in your marriage beat us up. Sometimes those kids that are going in the wrong direction beat us up. There are things that beat us up. Your health beats you up. You look at yourself in the mirror and you just feel beat up. Sister, you are not beat up. You are not knocked down. That's what I need to say. You are not knocked down. You are going to stand firmly on the rock. And it says you are going to hear the words and you are going to be a wise man, man, a wise woman who's built strong. How do you do that this month? You need to get in the Bible study fully relying on God. This Bible study is powerful. So those that are jumping on, you're going to want to watch the beginning of the video when I was all snotty and crying. And why was I all snotty and crying? And why did it bring us to right here? So please watch the beginning of this video. Rewatch it. You'll really know where my heart is struggling. You'll see where my tears are at. You'll understand where I'm at and why I am so excited about this. You'll understand why I'm holding on to right now, Matthew chapter six, verses 19, not laying up your treasures here on earth, but in heaven. So get your heart lined up spiritually and mentally and morally. Listen, our morals, everything's going in this world now. Whatever we feel is truth, we try to line that up and it doesn't line up with God. Let me tell you, when the end of the world comes, you are going to be the one that's going to be blown all around trying to figure it out. Rely on God now. Let me draw you into that place so you are secure when the storms come. There are going to be more spiritual storms coming. There are going to be more storms that are going to blow around in this world that looked just like Hurricane Ian. And Hurricane Ian has taken away so much from me, so much. It has taken friends, it has taken homes, it has taken memories, it has taken so much. But God reminded me of the parable of the two builders. He reminded me of Matthew 7, 24 and 7, those who hear these words of mine. You will be blown around on earth. You will be feeling the floods. You will be overwhelmed by the winds and the flooding. But this is when you have to know how your house is built, your temple right here. And so more than ever, I'm excited to jump into God's word and study this. Again, if you're watching for the first time, please go to my YouTube channel and look at the uh, um, 
the video I just put up this past week on how to study your Bible, it'll tell you how we use this process. It'll take you all the way through. So you're ready to start with on, on Monday, ready to start on Monday. We do the same process, the same rhythm every single month, just a different theme, a different theme every week and a different theme every day to match. So you really study God's word and you walk away feeling like I am wise because of the words I heard. I am wise of because what I fed today, I feel like I'm built up. I can restore. I can move on mentally, even though my marriage may not like look like it's coming together. My husband might not look like it's coming together or my church might, you know, still be in shambles or this relationship or my health, but me, nothing is going to blow me down. That's where we need to be. How do we get there? We learn by fully relying on God. So this starts Monday, Monday, this Monday, we are going to go through it for four weeks in the middle of this study. I'm going to be launching for you the November study, which is a gratitude journal. You are going to love it. It's a gratitude journal that I'm testing out because I actually want to make a gratitude journal for the whole year. So I've been working on that and you're going to have it very, very soon. Then comes January and listen, we're going to hold on to the promises of God again because we don't know what our December and January looks like. We don't know if another hurricane's going to come. We don't know if another pandemic is going to come, but we need to know how to fully rely on God. This study is going to help you to fully rely on God, fully rely on God. And I'm praying you'll come to hear the words of God, to be built up strong as a woman. So whatever comes and blows in your life, whatever hurricane comes, my hurricane's going to look different than you. Some might not have been touched. Yes, you're touched because you, you see what happened in Fort Myers. But when you lived there and had memories there, obviously your compassion toward it is a little different. Same with somebody that's struggling with a certain cancer. You know that grief. You know that hurt. You know that hurricane personally. And God's going to use you now to witness how it feels to be wise by his word and fully rely on God to bring more people to that place before the end of times. God needs you. God needs you to help other people fully rely on him. So I thank God today for all the Christians that are spread around all in Fort Myers. I pray that God gives them the spirit of wisdom to just lean into the people that are struggling and hurting so they can fully rely on God. I'm thanking God for the churches, the the people that are rising up. More than ever, we need to be those Priscilla's. Remember last month's study? We need to be those Priscilla's. We need to show hospitality. We need to show our love in any way, any way. I was just reading again in a devotional this week that when Elijah And a lot of other people, Joseph, people in scripture were going through depression. God sent an angel. God always sent an angel. You can be that angel. Some people are going through depression or hurt right now because they lost their home. You can be that angel. Amen. And if sometimes what some friends carry is a little bit much, and and I just experienced this this week too, and I, I know this is for someone, sometimes Somebody could be going through something and going through something and going through something and they just can't make that shift of how do I pray or how do I rely on God or how do I understand this? And you can bring them to Bible study more and more and more, but they're still struggling. That's when you're the angel to say, go sit down and get spiritual direction. Go sit down and really sit with somebody that can help you build yourself up wiser. Listen, you can be that friend and you can be that angel, but you need to be careful that you're not exasperated also in that friendship. Sometimes when we're we're with somebody that's going through loss and we're, we're listening to friends right now that are going through traumatic events due to this hurricane, I can be an angel of hope. I can, I can share what I can have, but then there's that next step of grieving or that next step of, I just don't understand things. And Be the best angel that you can by saying, 
I'm here for you as this angel, but go, go sit, go to your church, go somewhere, sit with a friend, go get counseling. There are post-traumatic uh, events that have happened in our house. There are things that are happened in our mind. There are images we can't get away from. There are memories we can't get away from. And we can. A lot of people will say, I've tried your Bible study, but I am still struggling here. Do you understand what happened to me as a child? Do you understand what this person did to me? And that's when I'll say, in our friendship, I know that you know the core values. I know that you understand God. I know that you want to rely on him. But maybe you need to take your relationship with God to that next place. And so if you're in that place, I do want to let you know that I am still coaching full time. And if you need that spiritual director, maybe you just need to do fully rely on God with me for the whole month. I do that. I break down scripture with you. Maybe you want to just do it two weeks at a time. And just look at a couple scriptures together so you can learn how to rely on them, learn how to pray. How do you break that down, Heather? I, I'm not sure if I understand that. But I need to rely on God from something that happened to me in my past. I need to rely on God and move away from this and forgive myself. I need to rely on God and forgive this person. I need to rely on God and have faith of what I'm hoping for, even though I cannot see it. I need to rely on God. If you're struggling, reach out and grab a session. Don't exasperate all the people around you. Sit down and do it one-on-one. And the Bible talks about that. Deborah was that person in scripture where she went and sat in a corner under a palm tree and she worked with people. Counselors out there today are doing that. It's so important. It's the best investment you can ever make. I've had to do that through so many transitions and so many seasons with my kids. I'm glad. I'm glad I have that person, that I invest in that person and that person invests in me. It's super important. And through some of the investments and some of the spiritual directions that I've had, I have been able to sit and shift my heart to the right place, to the eternal place, even though I'm struggling with the external And we get there. We live this gap of feeling torn. Like I know what I need to do. I know that I have to fully rely on God, but I'm torn. I am torn. What do we do in that torn spot? We allow that angel to touch us. We allow God's word to speak to us. We allow God's word to bring in healing. I'm going to delete this person. Come on, we don't have time for your broadcast here. How do we, let me delete. Sorry. There we go. I removed from broadcast. We don't have time for your dating industry. Move on. (laughs) All right. So I want you to understand that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. That is, I think, Proverbs. Let me look it up right now. If you guys want to know, when I when I hear a verse in my spirit, I don't know the verse sometimes, so I'll say, hey, Google, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Okay, that is Proverbs 13, 12. Proverbs 13, 12. It says, When hope is crushed, the heart is crushed, but a wish comes true, fills you with joy. Delayed hope makes the heart ill, but fulfilled longing is a tree of life. So what does that mean? What does it mean to say hope deferred makes the heart sick? Deferred means hope that's set back, hope that is disappointed, hope that is is experiencing disillusionment, Um, hope that is struggling because of what is in front of them. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Heart sick. Where are you heart sick? Because when you're heart sick, you've got to learn to fully rely on God. How do we learn to rely on God? This next month's study is going to tell you the second part of this verse. It says hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire brings forth a tree of life. We can't stay in the deferred moment We have to get to the desired moment. What does the desired moment look like? Four chapters here. 
easy, easy, easy verses that you can chew on are going to help you see the desires fulfilled. Even if it's not in the external, you'll feel it in the internal. Even if God's having you write a dream from a sickened heart, you're going to see the process of the rebuild. Amen. Can I get an amen? You're going to see the process of the rebuild in the sickened heart. And I can see that because when I claimed this verse with my husband, I watched God at work in my heart. I watched God at work in my husband's heart, work, heart and I watched God rebuild us and present new opportunities. I believe the same thing over Fort Myers, over Sanibel, all those things that are deferred right now, the Lord is good. The Lord is going to build that community. And I told my husband, it is going to be the most quaint, beautiful beautiful island in Florida. Yeah, we'll probably pay for that island, sisters. Probably be more expensive than it was, but um, my hope's there. My hope's there. I'm not going to live deferred. I live deferred all night just by playing over those memories, and I had to get out of it and start thinking hopeful. And that's that shift that I'm going to teach you in this book, all right? So this is starting Monday. Um, I really, 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 really would love you ladies. Let me just, um, I have to say hello to a bunch of you. Look at all you sweet ladies on here. Um, let me just show you right here. This right here, sisters, was the, um, teaching video. If you did not see this video, please watch this video because it's going to tell you how to study this month's Bible. It's going to tell you all the weeks. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to tell you how to understand the themes. I'm going to explain to you the highlighting chart. I'm going to explain to you the better you in 2022, which is your, your goals that you have all year. Well, those will shift and change. As a matter of fact, one of my goals on our life wheel was our dream for our Florida house, which we were hoping to purchase. Well, that's a big change on my spoke. So I've got to, you know, rethink things and redream things and take some deferred dreams that aren't coming to pass or really changing and write out new things. So these are all of your pages. So if you listen to this video, you will learn what this whole book, I even talked to you very clearly in that video about this, um, how to do your uh, scripture observation application and prayer. Um, screenshot this right now. If you're watching, um, these were great notes, great, great notes right there. Um, but anyway, super great study, your reflection time. Don't forget Friday live. That's what we're doing right now. We will be meeting again Friday next week and going over our first week together, um, in the study. Yes. The affirmation study is now up on Amazon. Thank you, Jesus. I added prayers to every single affirmation that you can speak out. So that is available for you. Um, our study here is available on Amazon, so you can hurry up and order that. You'll get it on time, I promise. If you haven't ordered it yet, go to heatherbaxter.com, Amazon. It is there. And then um, if you have a friend or if you have two friends, invite some people, lead a group, join a group, start it in your church. Um, maybe start getting them ready for the uh, uh, November study. So that's it. That's a little bit about what's happening um, I hope that helps. Oh, it's been, man, what a last, this last month has been unpredictable for me. And more than ever, I am ready, so ready to take off in this. I have my tab set. I even have my washi tape in and I'm ready to go for week one. I have some special notes that are personal. Yesterday I sat and read the first prayer, which was here. Oh, Man, I want to learn to trust with you in my life and the adversity that I am in right now and I'm facing. I choose to embrace this difficulty and to make the most out of it so that not one day will be wasted. I was rereading re the words of the book I put together when I did not even know that I was going to need this prayer more than ever. And I read it yesterday. That was bittersweet, bitter, bittersweet. And so God's on time. He's on time for everything. He, he, there, it's not by accident that you're listening to me right now and getting ready for this next study because he's going to have a word. If he used me to write the study and then I open the book up during one of the hardest days and it ministers to me, it blows me away. 
it blows me away. And then my pastor on Sunday, our new church we went to, talked on the authority of God and how God has authority over nature. Even if things are destroyed, he has authority. It may not look like he calmed that storm, but he still calms storms inside now spiritually. And that was important for me to remember what the pastor preached on Sunday when I experienced my Thursday. So all of it comes together. Being in a spiritual rhythm and routine will help you so much. So I pray that you come on this journey with us. I pray that you come on. Please watch the beginning of this video so you can get the whole picture of just where I'm at and how I'm experiencing God and what this Bible study means to me. Um, But for the rest of you that are here, thank you. Um, I encourage you to bring a friend on. Bring somebody, reach somebody, uh, and let's do this study together. So have a beautiful weekend. If you're here in Michigan, embrace this fall weather. Embrace it. It is gorgeous outside. Um, So I'm definitely going to embrace that. I'm looking at all the beautiful names that are on here. Good morning, sisters. I'm so happy to see you. I love seeing these names pop back up. I love the uh, the familiar familiarity, could I say that right, of everybody on here. Um, And uh, yeah, praying for Florida. Mm. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And um, let's pray together corporately for um, all of our uh, people in um, all the Florida area. And uh, let's also pray for us as we start this study on Monday. Father God, we thank you. that we have a place to come and hear your word, your wise word, words. Thank you that you're going to build us as wise women this next study, that you're going to shape us, you're going to restructure us, uh, you'll restructure our soul, Father. So we are more lining up our heart with the internal perspectives that we need to have in this world, the internal perspectives we need to have when we're fighting in our marriage, the internal perspectives we need to have when something has just been taken from us or destroyed, the internal perspectives we need to have during worry and fear. So Father, I pray that you will um, build us up as we learn to fully rely on you through all the verses, all the themes, everything that you're going to do to shape us. Father, open up our hearts to receive and help us to feel stronger. Help us to feel that those winds are coming in, but we feel we feel that we're on solid ground. Father, I pray that feeling over every woman. I f- pray that they feel built up. Right now, Father, we, we just stretch our hearts over Fort Myers Beach. We stretch our hearts over Sanibel Island and we stretch our hearts on all of the outskirts of those islands where those winds just whipped through and did other damage in Naples, all the way up through Bonita, into Jacksonville, into Orlando. Father, that Hurricane Ian was wicked. But Father, I pray right now that there's Christians around. There's Christians around as they're searching through the debris in Fort Myers Beach right now, that there's a witness Father, I pray that you come over that witness, you come over them with the presence of God to be there in that island right now, to minister hope, to minister grace, to minister love. Father, what has been taken down will be restored. We pray your hand um, all over Fort Myers. We pray your hand over any woman here um, that feels that they've been destroyed in the ministry, whether it's in their marriage or whatever, and they feel like that Fort Myers beach, they feel like that hurricane. Father, if they're living in the midst of the storm right now, I pray that you would just continue to nudge them to Monday, continue to nudge them into this Bible study where you can speak into their storm and calm it from an external and internal perspective through your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this ministry. Thank you for what you're going to do in the future and blessings upon all. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. Thank you for praying with me. That really felt good. That really, really felt good to just pray corporately. So I pray uh, a huge blessing over your weekend. I will see you back here Monday. I'm going to go live at 10 a.m. I have that written down. My schedule is open. I'm trying to get closer to leaving a time for you, but I'm going to be 10 a.m. in teaching on Monday. What we're going to do is we're going to open up. We're going to do week one, day one together. 
and I'll have a couple PowerPoints because I'll show you that I've already had them reworked, how I broke it down, and we'll just talk it out together. That way you can do your Tuesdays. Wednesday's going to be a podcast. You'll have Thursday, and Friday will be where we meet live and just talk about the whole week or talk about maybe whatever God lays on my heart, really. I don't know what that'll look like. He kind of brings me to that. Um, so remember to store up your treasures in heaven not here on earth. And the way we can start doing that is learning to fully rely on God. So head over to Amazon and grab your books today. Blessings. I love you, beautiful sisters. Bye-bye.